Hey everybody, David the AI Guide here on Tuesday. We're doing current events and today's current event is self-driving. So we talked a lot about this back in the transportation sector and there were a lot of different aspects of it and one of the pieces of breaking news today is going to touch on a bunch of that. We'll come back to that in a second, so hang on. But briefly, another thing that I saw in the last week or two was an article about why is it taking so long for Tesla to get full autonomous driving going? And that's even though Tesla's self-driving system has logged millions of miles. There's a real simple answer to that question and we'll answer that at the end. But going back to the first announcement, the first announcement is about Chrysler and Waymo. So Waymo and Chrysler are expanding what they've been working together on since 2016. So you may know that from previous segments, we talked about Waymo doing autonomous passenger pickups and drop-offs in Phoenix using a Chrysler Pacifica minivan. So they've been doing that for four years now. But again, we talked about the fact that there's a process to that. So fully autonomous driving with no human in is scary for some people, right? They're, it's something so different and so new that it's scary. And the same is true for the federal government who has to license that activity right? There's the National Highway Transportation Safety Agency, or NHTSA, and uh, there's um, other agencies that are involved in self-driving. So um, it's a go-slow approach on self-driving. And what happens with Waymo in Phoenix is that you start out with their app, you get their special app, that lets you start into autonomy. And for six months or so, you have to use vans that pick up people who have an assistive driver in them. So it's got a backup guy or girl <laughs> in there to take over in case something happens. And you have to ride around like that for six months until you feel comfortable with it. Then after this period, they'll start sending around the fully autonomous vans to pick you up, take you where you want to go and drop you off, which is to me extremely cool, <laughs> but people have to get used to it. The regulators have to get used to this too. And it's not just data, right? Data is important. We talked previously that autonomous vehicles are already orders of magnitude safer than human-driven vehicles. Why? Because 40,000 people a year get killed on the roads of the United States by human beings, 40,000 every year, and uh, seven have been killed by an autonomous vehicle. Now there's way fewer autonomous vehicles and you have to take that into account, but based on miles driven, which is a fair comparison, autonomous driving is far, far safer. And that's the ultimate benefit, right? The ultimate benefit of autonomous vehicles is once it really takes off and there's widespread adoption, it's cheaper, but most importantly, it's safer. You're going to cut that 40,000 down to hundreds, probably, which is a huge change. It's never happened. Um, but it takes a long time and there's a lot of social and regulatory pressure holding back these kind of autonomous vehicles. What there isn't as much pressure on is commercial delivery vehicles. And we also talked about that, right? We talked about the fact that there are already fully autonomous trucks on the freeway like in Southwest Virginia and all across I-10 from Florida to uh, say New Mexico or Arizona doing these long runs with full autonomy. But there's a huge but. <laughs> they can only do exit to exit and you basically have to have a terminal right off the exit and a human driver has to get in the rig and 
pull it into the terminal area and back it up to loading dock and then it has to be unloaded and all that. That'll be worked out eventually. But Waymo and Chrysler are specifically expanding their uh, partnership to focus on these kind of commercial delivery vehicles because there's a lot re less resistance to it. Why? Because many conver uh, commercial vehicles, think about it, you can't even see inside them. You can't see the driver. You don't know who's driving it. You don't know that nobody's driving it. So it's just much easier to do that than passenger cars where the oncoming drivers or drivers to your right and left or not drivers is very, very visible and takes social adjustment. So uh, Waymo and Chrysler are going to start working on uh, the Ram Master vans, which are sold globally. And those are going to do, those size vehicles do mostly point to point local delivery. So they're going to work on that. And we talked about a slew of company doing, companies doing what we call last mile delivery, which is from these box trucks, maybe running stuff from post office to post office, for example, and then there's that local delivery piece to your doorstep. But there's all those robots now that deliver food, that can deliver packages, and the drone wars are just about to stop because that is through the regulatory battle. Uh, the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, has already approved use of commercial drones in commercial airspace. So this is happening soon and they're going to be everywhere. But uh, Waymo and Chrysler again expanding their partnership. Now let's go back to one thing I hinted at earlier, which is Tesla, right? So there's different levels of autonomy. And right now, Teslas are at level three, which means that a human driver has to be in the seat and be alert and ready to take control at any minute. Um, you hear and see videos of people falling asleep while they're self-driving Teslas going down the freeway and stuff like that. It's not quite there yet. That is level four autonomy. And that autonomy, which is basically there's a human in the car or truck, but the AI can take care of everything except in an extreme emergency event. Um, that is the kind of autonomy that Waymo and Chrysler are, are targeting. Now, Tesla will get there. They will definitely get there. And within a few years, probably, to solid level three up to level four because they're racking up so many millions of miles. Tesla has sold tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of cars now. And so the data is accumulating crazy fast now, which is what it's all about, the data. Um, and we've talked about sensors. Well, there's even better sensors coming out and there's alternate technologies coming out that do not rely on sensors, but they rely on basic cameras that identify landmarks on the route. And based on the buildings it's passing and all that, it knows exactly where it is from this 3D map. So that's a whole other way to go. So there's many, many things happening. This technology will be fully disruptive this decade. So by 2030, there's going to be widespread adoption of autonomous vehicles, both passenger and commercial, and the world will have changed. Uh, by the way, we talked about this too, China's ahead of the US. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll see, we'll keep an eye on this. This is definitely something that's going to regularly come up in our current events segment, and I'll see you on Saturday.